We're gonna go over exactly how to set up an Apollo solar generator or a solar power station, however you wanna call it. So this is for one Apollo and one battery. We're gonna put it all together from beginning to end. So that way, if you have this set up, this guide will be helpful to you. And in other videos, I'll show you how to put multiple setups together. So that way you can run your house or your emergency essentials for your setup. I've been running these two Apollo solar generators in a single phase output for almost three months now. There has been zero hiccups. I've run my freeze dryer. I've run air conditioning. I've run fridges. I've run freezers. I've run so much off of it that I can absolutely recommend this system. You'll notice in this video, there are no ads. If there are ads, I have deselected ads on my videos now. So that way you can just get the information. If you appreciate that and you want to support the channel, you can order any of your equipment through poweredportablesolar.com or support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. Sometimes YouTube will put ads on the video. I want to make this as efficient as possible for you. Let's go ahead and get right into it. What I have here is my Apollo unit, one expansion battery, the wheel cart. In the accessories, you'll get these leather covers. These will go over the handles. I'll show you how to put those on. This is your solar connection adapter. It's not actually an adapter. I'll show you how to use that. This is your wall charger. It does come with a 15 amp to 30 amp adapter because this cable is rated to 30 amps. And then this allows you to go down to a normal plug. So you have the option to run high output or normal output here with these cables. I only wish this was longer, but you can just get an extension cable and work with it that way. You have your car charging cable. I will likely not be using this very much, but in the case that you wanna charge it on the go from your cigarette lighter port in your car, there you go. And one thing that I have not seen included by any other company is the grounding wire with the eyelet piece and even a ground rod. This is very sharp. You wanna be careful with it. I personally don't ground my units, but it's definitely not a bad idea. You could always do that. For the cart, you're gonna get these two pieces here, which allow the battery to get clamped on just using these bolts. It's very simple. And with the expansion battery, you will get this cable, which has a red tag to be able to connect the main unit to the expansion battery. It's very easy. I'll show you that as well. Besides getting discounted kits and extra customer service and extra help that you would otherwise not get, if you order from poweredportablesolar.com, you'll also get this accessories bag, as well as solar cables and other accessories to make your life even easier. You can see for all four of my Apollos, I have all of my accessories here in one bag, and I just put this simple tag on it, so that way I know on the shelf if I need anything for my units, I grab this and I'm good to go. Again, all of that's included if you order from poweredportablesolar.com. Sorry. This wheel cart has been custom made for the Apollo setup. So this is not some generic off the shelf. It has high grade three inch wheels on these casters. So it's really easy to move and all four wheels have locks. So whichever orientation the whole unit ends up in, you can easily reach the locks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my cart here and I'm gonna engage the locks, at least on two wheels. And I'm gonna pick this up and set on my battery. This battery is heavy. Make sure you lift with your legs. It's really best to have two people. So I'm gonna lift with my legs straight up and just set it right on. And it falls right in to the little cup holes that are on the cart. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the main unit. Again, it's best with two people. I'm gonna lift with my legs. And you do want the Apollo to go on top of the battery. Just gonna slide until it falls right into those holes. So I have well over 200 pounds here and you can see just how effortless this is to move around on a flat surface. I absolutely highly recommend the cart. To add the clamps is very easy. Simply going to grab my clamp. These holes here are cut oblong on purpose so it's easy to find the holes down here. I'm just going to screw that on. The weight alone is enough to keep it on the cart but High Solus made sure that it had no question about being able to keep this on. I've been told that eventually there will be a clamp that can go right here as well to keep it even more secure. Do the exact same thing on the back. Just like that, it is now officially on the cart and the cart is not going to come off of this. It's recommended that you have one battery and one Apollo on a cart or two batteries on a cart with no Apollo on it. The cart is capable of holding more weight, but the reality is it gets really tall and we don't wanna cause a tipping hazard because if this does fall over, it would be sad if that happened. There are a number of connections here on the back. This is your AC input that's rated up to 30 amps. This is wall charging. AC stands for alternating current, so that's your wall charger. You have an inverter reset switch as well as an AC input reset switch. In case you happen to pull too much energy, this could pop out. 
You have your communication ports right here. This is when you're using multiple units. For this single unit, you will not need these. And then we have our battery one and battery two expansion ports here. We have our battery switch, our power switches right here. This is MC4 connectors built in to the unit. When your unit comes, this sticker will be over these ports. You need to read this sticker. Don't put more than 500 volts VOC. You need at least 120 volts VMP going in right here. You also have your DC input right here for your car charger. On the battery, you have your battery input one and battery input two for expandability. You have all your specs, and this is the only unit out of all the units currently in existence that has been TUV certified, which simply means that it's been third party tested to the nth degree to find any problem and it passed with flying colors, finding no problems. Lastly, you have your grounding port right here. That's where the cable for your ground will plug straight into and you can run your grounding wire, stick it in the ground, and you're good to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my battery port one and go to battery port one right here and expand that with the red battery cable. This has a twist lock right here. So we can see you kind of have an upside down smiley face. I'm going to match the upside down smiley face, push that on. And then this simply twist until it clicks in, give it another quarter twist and that's going to lock it in. One of the things that I really love is how flexible this cable is. So many units have very inflexible battery cables. Upside down smiley face, upside down smiley face, push on. Quarter turn, now that's locked on, it is not going to come off. You can see how far it sticks out behind, but with how flexible this cable is, you could tuck it like that and it's gonna stick out three or four inches out of the back. So keep that in mind if you need to tuck it into a tight place, you will be able to bend that down a little bit. Now do like Top Gun, flip up these covers and turn on the battery and the main unit. It is going to start booting up. It will take probably 15 or 20 seconds to get fully booted up. This flashing finger will always be here when you boot it up, so you need to reset the inverter. So I'm gonna to touch the screen and then push the AC output button. See that finger went away. Now I'm going to turn on AC load. You'll hear a beep and then I hear a click. That tells me that the inverter is now working. You can reset the inverter first or go to settings and make sure we have this all set correctly. Working mode, I want it in UPS. That means I can charge and run things out of the outlets at the same time. It will input 750 watts to the battery and then whatever the loads are running we will run that as well. I'm going to keep energy saver off. Energy saver simply means that the inverter turns off until it senses a load. For example, a refrigerator will not run for 60 minutes of every hour. So I could have my refrigerator plugged into this and when the refrigerator is not drawing energy, the inverter will turn off to save even more energy. And then when the fridge needs to kick on, it will come out of energy saver mode and go run the fridge. Unattended mode, also called dark start mode, is one of the main reasons I recommend the Apollo. What this allows me to do is set what battery percentage I want this to turn back on after completely being depleted. So I can run the battery all the way down to 0% and then these outlets will turn off, but the system stays turned on. Once my solar panels recharge the battery to 30% or 10% or whatever percentage I select, then these loads will turn back on. It is the only system on the market currently to have this, which means it's the only unit that's self-sufficient in keeping itself running, even in an off-grid setup when you're not around. Parallel mode, we are in single phase. This is just one unit. And in other videos, we'll show you the other different options, but you do have split phase and three phase options here. You can choose your language. You can set your date, time, brightness, and sound. For the brightness, I like to have both of these turned up. This bottom bar is your dim brightness setting. After 30 seconds, the screen will go dimmer and you can set how dim you want that to be. You can see how dim it'll be by using this bar here, which is your active brightness. So I keep that all the way up. If you want the screen to go dim after it has not been touched for 30 seconds, you can adjust that. I like to have mine all the way up. Just keep in mind that after 30 seconds, the screen will need to be clicked to engage it and then clicked again to push a button. So if you feel like you're clicking and you're not getting a response, that's because you're waking up the screen. And then if you need to reset your Wi-Fi for connection to the app, you can do that right here. Behind the screen, the screen is removable, you will have your QR code and your serial number, which will allow you to connect your unit to the app easily. When you remove the screen, you'll see there's a USB charging port here and a power button. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and you can actually mount this on a wall or keep it in your bedroom or anywhere else you want and monitor this system from afar without having to use your phone. It's going to reconnect here 
And now we're reconnected. I'm going to reset the inverter and turn on the inverter. Everything can be controlled wirelessly from this. This is an awesome setup for RVs because it's all Bluetooth and I can just put it on a phone charger to keep it topped off. When seated here on the front, it is charging on its own off of these pins right here. You have two USB-C, one 18 watt, one 100 watt. You have a 10 amp cigarette lighter port and then a dual 12 volt 30 amp Anderson plug here for running high amperage 12 volt devices. You have your TT30 RV plug right here, rated to 25 amps output. Volts times amps equals watts. 120 volts times 25 amps is 3000 watts. That is the inverter output. And then these outlets are rated to 20 amps here. The other thing not included in any other system is an air filtration system. The fans not only are super quiet, you can be right next to it and not hear it basically, but it does have a cleanable vent cover here. The fans are running and it's holding this foam in place. So if you're in a dusty environment like a garage or RV, then you're going to be filtering your air so you don't run into issues internally years down the road. This pad here is a wireless charging pad. On the screen, I can turn on DC output. You'll see red lights show up here. And that means that this wireless charging pad is ready to go. These are the leather handle covers. Simply slip them around here and Velcro on. For your solar input, it's important to notice these signs right here. You have your positive and negative. On your solar input cable, you have a DC breaker. This is for your safety because this is a high voltage unit allowing up to 500 volts input. It is currently the only high voltage system on the market. You'll notice that there is a short cable side and a long cable side. Green on the breaker means safe. Red means energized. So that can be a little confusing. Make sure to keep that in mind. Your off is green. The long side of your cable is what's going to go on the back here. I like to put it through the hole for the handle up top. Notice the red and black colors and the connectors. If I tried to take this red and go here, that is not possible. It's gonna go male to female, positive to red, male, female, and go negative to black. Now when I connect solar panels, I will be able to have the male positive end go into this red and the negative female and go into this. Once I've connected my solar panels, I will then turn this to the red position or to the on position to allow solar input in. I have 10 400 watt solar panels on this solar cable right here. To absolutely ensure everything is good to go, I'm gonna to go to volts DC on my voltmeter and I'm gonna take the red probe and put it inside the red connector, the male connector, and then opposite here. And we can see we're at 371 volts for my 10 solar panels. We're below the 500 volt mark, so we're ready to connect. Notice how naturally the red goes to red following male, female, and the black goes to black following male, female connections. So now that I've made this connection, I can flip this up and turn it to the on position, cover it back up and we'll hear a beep. And now we have solar input going in. See, there's 4,500 watts going in right now. Very impressive for this unit. This is the advantage of high voltage is that you can get really good solar input in. This is one of the most unique features and probably the number one reason why I recommend the Apollo. It simply is such a good system to use. It's very user friendly. It's very safe. There are no safety concerns because of that TUV certification down to the point that there's even a breaker included with the unit. No other system on the market currently does that. The Apollo does a lot of things that no other system on the market does, which is why I love it so much. For the best deals, kits, help, guidance, anything you need, go to poweredportablesolar.com or shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. If you found this helpful, smash the like button. And for other videos that you would find helpful, please comment down below what those would be. I personally choose the Apollo solar generator to be my backup and my preparedness option for myself and for my family, for my home, for my off-grid cabin, for my RV, for all off-grid backup power solutions. Even for my RV, where if I wanna go on vacation, I can take this with me, put it in my RV, plug straight into here, have 10.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, tons of solar input, and know that I'm gonna be able to run everything very comfortably without any issues. To see more videos on how I connect two of these together in single phase, as well as two of them together in split phase for 240 volt power, as well as four of them together in split phase for 12,000 watts output, 
Make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll have those videos coming out shortly. Guys, now's the time to be prepared. I'll see you on the next video.